This video is about why predicting diverticulitis flare-ups is tough. So we live in a world of abundance, so information overload, uh, like I'll mention a few times. It's crazy out there. You have so much information, so many details you should focus on, but what should you actually be doing? Haven't you ever wondered why that's the case? Why it's tough to predict the flare-up? So why are some things triggering you and other things not? So flare-ups are difficult to predict. Um, because of the mixing of multiple factors. So they can vary a lot between individuals. So let's actually see what the data shows, get into some evidence-based reasons as to why these flare-ups are tough to predict. In this video, let's go over six of them. So if you're new here, I'm a family medicine doctor. On this channel, we talk about medical topics and living a healthy lifestyle. So if this stuff interests you, then please subscribe and follow along. All right. Before we jump into the reasons as to why, let's do a quick rundown of some definitions. So what is diverticular disease? What is diverticulitis? Uh, they're both related digestive conditions. They affect the large intestine, the bowel. So food goes in through the mouth, down to the esophagus, into the stomach, then the small intestine does some action. Then we get to the large intestine where our topic of interest is in this video before the food then goes out through the anus. So diverticula. They are small bulges or pockets that can develop in the lining of the large intestine as you get older. Think about a balloon, blowing up a balloon. So that kind of pocket develops, kind of like that. Diverticular disease is when you have a bunch of these pouches or pockets, diverticula, along the large intestine wall. While these pouches or diverticula, they're generally harmless, they can become problematic and lead to complications if they become infected or inflamed. They cause some symptoms. So when there are no symptoms, diverticulosis or diverticular disease, interchangeable terms really, if the diverticula become inflamed or infected or start to cause problems or severe symptoms, it's called diverticulitis. So why you get these diverticula or another video which we covered causes, risk factors, things like that. So be sure to check that out. I'll link them down in the description below. So let's get into the reasons as to why flare-ups are difficult to predict. Individual variability in risk factors. So we're gonna mention this quite a few times, but this is reason number one. So we did a video on causes and risk factors, but the overarching theme is to focus on a healthy lifestyle, to try and prevent bad things from happening to you like diverticulitis. So some things you can control like genetics, but other things you can control like living a sedentary lifestyle or choosing some of the foods that you eat. So dietary triggers are an interesting one. We are, we're all different. So different things trigger us in different ways. So some of us thought that low fiber links to a flare, for example, or things like seeds and nuts do. But evidence shows that they do not universally cause a flare and no single dietary component reliably does that. Another aspect of individual variability is the gut microbiome. Plenty of microbes in our gut Changes in this microbiome can contribute to inflammation, but the exact profile of the microbes leading to flares or predicting flares is, like I said, can vary a lot because we're all different, so you don't really know. Then we have all the other things that may heighten the risk, but they don't consistently predict when a flare will happen. So here I'm talking about having other inflammatory diseases, obesity, diabetes, amongst many other things unpredictable progression of diverticula. So these pouches we're talking about in the large intestine, the diverticula, they can remain asymptomatic, meaning they don't cause you any trouble, or they can become inflamed and infected and cause trouble. Both of these things occur for unknown reasons mainly. So some diverticula can develop complications like more infection or perforation without any warning at all. So perforation is basically when a hole develops in the diverticula. So think of the balloon we mentioned earlier on popping. So this can lead to a lot of trouble. So the unpredictability is very important here to consider. Subtle or gradual onset of symptoms. So Adding on to that, another reason why a flare-up is difficult to predict is because of the nature of the symptoms and the way they progress. So early signs of a flare-up, like abdominal pain, bloating, changes in bowel habit, these are all non-specific. These can happen to you, you know, any day of the week, really. They can be a normal bellyache and may not be a sign that a flare is coming at all. A lot of people can dismiss these symptoms for something else entirely, and then before you know it, the condition worsens 
as well. So it's something very important to consider here, the subtle or gradual onset of symptoms. Then we move on to the role of lifestyle factors. So we touched upon this earlier on. So we are all different and we have different bodies. There can be a host of lifestyle related factors that make predicting a flare up difficult. So psychological stress, for example, it's increasingly recognized as a factor in flare ups due to its impact on the immune system and the gut motility. So that's an important factor. Then we have medication, they can play a big role. So using things like NSAIDs, so ibuprofen and stuff like that, or corticosteroids or opioids, they can exacerbate inflammation and they can make a risk of further complications occurring. So, but the exact impact of their um, influence is difficult to predict again. So this is another reason why it's tough. And then we have the silent or asymptomatic diverticula. So like we mentioned, diverticula can develop as we age. Some can cause trouble, others might not, we don't know. Some can just stay silent for years and years and years without symptoms developing. So there's simply no blood test or marker that you can do to predict when inflammation or flare-ups can occur. There, there's, it doesn't exist. So at the end of the day, this condition, it's very common. It happens more and more as you get older. And it's estimated that about 30 to 50% of people over the age of 50 have diverticular disease. And this prevalence just increases more and more and more as we age. So by the time you're 80, about 70% of people have diverticular disease. So that's very interesting to know. And then diverticulitis is, is the next point after that. So about 10 to 25% of the individuals with diverticular disease may develop diverticulitis at some point in their lives. So the risk of developing diverticulitis tends to increase with age, but the ability to predict it is very, very difficult as we've gone through in this video. Environmental and behavioral factors. So this one is so wide and varied. No wonder everybody on the internet claims a lot of things that can help and that can harm. So we live in an age of abundance, so information overload. I mentioned that there's no singular dietary thing that provokes attacks, according to the evidence. Sudden changes in diet, hydration level, or physical activity, they can affect you know, your gut motility, your intraluminal pressure. These can potentially be triggers, but predicting it is a whole nother matter. So you gotta keep in mind that these effects are not the same across every individual. This is what makes it so tough. So the difficulty in predicting flare-ups is a complex story. So it lies between, you know, a mixing and matching of physiological, environmental, lifestyle factors, coupled with individual variability like your gut microbiome, your gut health, uh, immune system, and other comorbidities, right? Like whether you have other diseases and things like that. So there's always research into my biomarkers and the gut microbiome going on. This is continuing to improve and go on and on and on. But the predictability in the future is uh, difficult. It's gonna stay difficult. So do what you can control. So what I mean by that is focus on a healthy lifestyle. Uh, eat enough fiber, eat a balanced diet, stay hydrated, avoid smoking, manage your other diseases if you have them, comorbidities. Just do the lifestyle measures that you know, you know deep down are useful to do. Um, do the 10 important things, don't get bogged down on the details, don't get too obsessed about it, and just focus on the right stuff. That's it for this video. Leave a comment, let me know what you think. See you in the next video.